Bismarck is now a slaughterhouse. The huge dreadnought fires a final salvo. But at 9.31 a.m., her mighty guns fall silent. As Bismarck's guns stopped, shells were hitting everywhere. Pieces of the ship were blasted away. In the end, it was pitiful to see, really, because we knew she wasn't firing anymore. Tubby's warships fire over 2,800 shells. 400 hits reduce Bismarck to a ravaged steel inferno. But the great battleship, her flag still flying, remains afloat. At 1021, Tubby ceases fire. The cruiser Dorsetshire moves in to sink Bismarck with torpedoes. But the commanding officers left on Bismarck have other plans. To be in Räume, they announced over the PA that we should set scuttling charges and open the sea valves. We were going to sink her ourselves and abandon ship. Before the scuttling charges take effect, the Dorsetshire fires three 21-inch torpedoes into Bismarck. At 10.39 a.m., Bismarck sinks by the stern into a watery grave. During the fight, swordfish flew in but couldn't make attack runs in the fury of the surface battle. Now, Jock Moffat flies above the carnage. I was witness to a scene which haunted me for many days. All those hundreds of poor sailors bobbing up and down in gale waters is not a pretty sight. And when we got back to the ship, there was no euphoria because we thought to ourselves, they're sailors, we're sailors, and they're by the grace of God. Out of Bismarck's crew of 2,092, only 115 survive. Among the dead are Admiral Luchens and Captain Lindemann. Bismarck's only combat mission lasted just 215 hours. She proved a formidable enemy against surface ships. But ultimately, courageous British pilots in antiquated biplanes proved that dreadnoughts were vulnerable.